Microsoft is coming to the AIM market in an IPO. It's commercializing a patented technology to produce what it says is full flavor, low sodium salt for food manufacturers and consumers. It's aiming to raise between 10 to 15 million pounds in the IPO. Interestingly, alongside an institutional placing, retail investors can participate in a two and a half million primary bid offer directly through the company's website. Let's find out more now about what's happening with the chief executive, Rick Guiney. Uh, Rick, welcome. Thanks indeed for taking some time out to discuss this. I know you're based in Florida, so there's a, a bit of a time difference here, but I know you're, you're listing here in the London market, so you've got to get used to um, dealing with us Londoners and on this side of the Atlantic. But look, um, IPOs are a scarce animal in the markets at the moment. Why now? Why have you picked this moment? Well, Microsoft is an important health and innovation across the world. As sodium becomes a bigger and bigger problem, and it becomes more and more exposed to government regulations, there is no time to wait. So we we decided that this is the great the, the best time for us to reach out to the market. We are have great momentum across the globe, and there's actually no reason to wait. Every time you wait on an innovation like this, somebody else um, pays, pays an, an inevitable price. Yeah. Look, I, I want to get more detail about the product in just a minute. But I want to take a look in some more detail about this IPO because retail investors invited in this primary bid. Explain what this is and why you've hit upon this route because it is somewhat unusual, I understand. Yes, it is. And th there's there's two, two, fold, two things going on here. First, you know, our reach is to, to the world market. So therefore we go to the big world manufacturing companies, food companies, to help them lower their sodium. But in addition, it's an intentionally pers personal uh, issue for everybody. Everybody needs to lower the sodium, whether you are cooking at home exclusively or whether you're buying your food exclusively through through uh, the, re the retail markets. So we felt it was really important to reach out to everybody, un unlike the traditional IPOs that just go through the through the the major investors we felt it was really important especially in the UK where sodium is such a high has such a high attention level that we make it available to everybody yeah let me just ask one more question about the IPO uh, as I said at the top it, raising anything between 10 and 15 million sterling what will you do with the money what's the what, what's the proceeds going to be used for well you know when you sell to the world you need salespeople to do that you need multilingual people to do that you need a marketing staff that that addresses each market individually, and of course, you know when you when you address a market as large as we do, we need to have manufacturing facilities in various geographies. Uh, we 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 have great capacity right now, but uh, we want to be able to put a plant wherever we need some. We, we, if we could put one in in the UK, that'd be great. If we could put one in Western, Western Europe or in Asia in Australia, that'd be awesome. So that's really where we're going. The, the market is leading us that way because of the size of the potential. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty much the, the focus. Well, let's, let's look more at the size and the potential for micro salt. As I said above, um, you talk about a full flavor, low sodium salt. How does it differ from salt? Sure. Uh, well, micro salt is salt. I, I, and... So, 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 where do you get it from? Why is this different from ordinary salt you would get on supermarket shelves already? Well, Microsoft is a new technology, and it wasn't available five years ago. And it allows us to basically change the surface area of salt to make it more intense, so you don't ingest excess sodium. It's 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 brilliant in its simplicity. We take traditional salt. It could be any kind of salt from anywhere across the, the globe. It could be sea salt or pink Himalayan or African black salt. It doesn't matter. We put it through a patented process. We reduce the size of the crystal. By, in, and by doing that, we improve its surface area so that when it hits your tongue, you get your full flavor exposure, explosion of full flavor that you're expecting, but without excess sodium. So, so the... The the the, um, the 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 patent that's covering this, you own this. Is this something that your yes, your team have established? Is it something that you can license, or is it going to be something that you're going to want to um, manufacture yourselves and keep control of as a full production and a full vertical integrated sort of system between uh, the factory and the consumer? 
Yes, we 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 may we were our, our intention is to remain complete control. Uh, we're not interested in 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 having this farmed out and in, 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 in any way diluted its value to the consumer. Our goal, our whole purpose of being here is to help people lower their sodium. And we feel the best way for us to do that with Microsoft is to maintain control of the manufacturing rights and to work with the big multinational food companies to help them use Microsoft to lower sodium. Now, as you said, five years ago, this wasn't available. Clearly, it's a new product. How easy is it for you to sell this idea to, well, let's start with the medical profession, because clearly this is, you say, something potentially that has far-reaching ramifications for people that uh, put salt on their food. Let's face it, we all do. I mean, salt goes back biblical times and more. We've we've all used salt. We, we pay a lot of money originally for salt. Uh, it's now relatively freely available. But as you say, an aversion which causes some physical damage to uh, the biological makeup of our bodies. So here we are now with what you say is something which transforms that. How much of, what sort of reception are you getting when you speak to new markets? Well, you know, it's interesting enough. Um, we're, we're getting great reception. There's a couple of reasons why this is going on. First, there is no mystery, there is no doubt. Sodium is bad for all of us. Whether you live in the US or the UK or, or anywhere in the world, and everybody acknowledges that's a, a standard medical fact and that the sodium consumption isn't going down. That's a big problem. And the governments like yours in the UK, the ones here in the US and in Latin America and South America are taking serious looks at how they can make this happen because industry hasn't done it voluntarily. So when we pr propose our solution, the, the, the ears are already open. They're mm. looking for a solution. It's not that the food industry ha hasn't wanted to do this. It just hasn't had the technology till Microsoft came around. Previous to, to Microsoft, there were other uh, technologies that involved different chem chemicals and different versions of different products that required uh, flavor enhancers to make the food taste right. You know, the, the basic underlying thing with Microsoft, it's very simple. You can't change the world with bad tasting food. You know, whether you're on a specific medical diet or you're trying to lose weight or trying to become healthier or trying to lower your sodium, it's very hard to do that if your food tastes bad. We've solved that that paradigm because it tastes just like regular salt because it is salt. So, for example, you don't have to choose between low sodium crisps and regular crisps. Now, it's just going to be regular crisps, but they're going to have 50% less sodium. So, so, so it's going to taste exactly the same. So, so let's let's expand on what the commercial traction is here so far. When, when you when you approach um, a snacks company, for example, and say, "Look, I think I've got a, a solution to what is a well-known problem," do you get questions like, "Have you undertaken tests? Is there some sort of uh, medical or uh, chemical?" Um, uh, I don't know, answer or some sort of backup to this and to, to ensure that it doesn't carry some other side effects. Sure. Yes. And we've been, uh, ex we go through an extreme, extremely diligent uh, sets of tests every time a customer wants to look at it. And not only do they run their, their consumer product testings the way they do with focus groups and testings, they also run it through their production facilities to see how it runs, how it works. And again, the brilliance of Microsoft is that it's extremely simple. And so that, it, that there are no hidden chemicals. There are no, there are no, um, uh, it's not a science experiment. It's a, a simply a new way for us to, to lower the, the surface area of a salt crystal. And, you know, the, again, the whole goal is to lower sodium. Mm, yeah. That's what we're trying to do. And the best way to do that is to have food taste good. <laughs> what, what sort of commercial traction has Microsoft been able to make in what I believe is a potentially, I guess, a very lucrative snacks industry uh, that you can approach? Yes, you know, and we, and we only we don't pr approach just the snack industry. We, we approach the entire food industry. That would include bread. It would include uh, uh, any pre-made meals. It includes anything with salt. And You'd be surprised how salt is everywhere. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, it's been with us for thousands of years. Uh, it's in it, so it's not just the snack industry. It's not just the topical applications where you sprinkle it on crisps or use it on cookies or pretzels or what whatever your application is. It's in everywhere. And you know some of the other those markets, uh, the bread market, for example, might even be larger than the crisp market. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft works great in bread. You can't taste the difference. And you're ingesting less sodium, so we are getting a lot of good 
uh, fraction. Now, when you change those kind of companies, when you approach the big multinationals, they have a long sales cycle internally. They're going to test it on their own. They're going to pick test markets to roll it out. So you don't go from you don't go from zero to 100% overnight. It takes a little bit of time for 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 these people to roll it out. But we've been very successful so far. Uh, we haven't come up. We haven't failed one single test. Not one single uh, large cus- customer that has run us through the testing has come back with a fail. Mm. Have you? Have, it's, again, have, have you just approached the B two B market at the moment, or are you going to ultimately go to B two C uh, to sell over the supermarket shelves to all of us that want to put a bit of salt in our fish and chips? Yes, we are. We are not. We are not ignoring the the, the at home market now. It's true. Seventy percent of the sodium we all ingest comes from the food we buy. But that 30% at home is still important to us, especially when, for example, you if you go to the doctor and you, unfortunately you're given a, a a diet that's low sodium. We provide medical people with free samples so that they can give them out to the patients and say, here, use this at home. And so eventually that'll catch on. Uh, we, and we're, and they can buy, we have two size retail shakers available now, a two ounce and a six ounce. And those will become a a generational product in people's pantries they can use it as, instead of traditional salt now you know we all we all see how you know when you put salt in your food how it bounces off microsoft doesn't bounce off microsoft sticks and that's another benefit you don't use extra you don't have it all over your plate and if you're a food manufacturer that means you don't have it on your floor you don't have it inside your machines it's on the product it's not in the bottom of the bag So it it works great across the board. What about um, when dealing with governments? I mean, governments take a lot of control over food, food supply, uh, the sources of food and so forth. I'm thinking perhaps mainly more than government, more like the EU, which is, I think it's fair to say, I mean, I've been around the business uh, world for uh, many decades now, and I, I know a headwind when I see it. And I know that Europe tends to put the foot in the brake quite early. Do you have any uh, experience of approaching the European Union food markets, the controlling markets that that look at the sort of additives that are available or potentially available to uh, the manufacturers in Europe? Do you think Europe could be a problem? No, we, we, we're very optimistic about Europe. We've had a good deal of exposure in Europe already. And uh, we've hired the very best people to make sure that we are, our position is correct. Uh, you know, specifically, you might be talking about the, new, the Novel Foods Act in the UK and in, in generally speaking uh, in Western Europe. And we have been given the, the authority that our product is not a novel foods. But we still have applied for it under the, that regulation. So we have no expectation of any headwinds at all as far as regulation is concerned. Again, because it's a, there's it's very simple. Mm. If there's a market that uses salt, then we're going to be able to sell Microsoft. Look, you're, you're based in, in Florida, and I know the ideas come out of, uh, of out of America, but you're listing in London. You're registered in the London markets as a, as a, as a business. Um, wh- why London, first of all? Because, yes, look, it's in the middle of the time zone around the world. But, I mean, what else, what else does London give you, of course, apart from the AIM market? Yes. Well, you know, London is a really interesting market. First, it's our, our belief that the London typical London market, they're more savvy, they're more nuanced in food than some other places. Uh, we can get more attention and more understanding about uh, novel foods and how new foods can impact people in the London market as compared to some other markets. Also, a number of our large prospects reside in the UK. A number of the uh, large multinationals have their R&D departments headquartered in London. So it makes sense for us across the board to, to start with the London market. And quite honestly, from a, I'll be a sales guy now for a second. <laughs> when I make a presentation to somebody and say, yes, and it's a, we're on the London Stock Exchange, eyebrows go up and say, okay, it's like a, it's like a de facto stamp of approval mm-hmm. across the rest of the world. So we're really happy to be uh, as, a part of the, the London Stock Exchange. Yeah. Look, um, Big, um, big opportunity here for a big question. Uh, and take a look at the market. How big is the salt market? I mean, if you take the entire world, I mean, I guess it's big, um, a little bit it's, bigger than you're aiming for the listing in London. Uh, the world's your oyster. What, how, what, are you, what are you aiming for? It's, 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 
it's really a huge number, of course. And now again, our, our goal is to help people lower sodium. The low sodium market alone is five and a half billion dollars in 2022. But we're reaching, not only are we reaching into that market, we're reaching into the, as you mentioned, the salt, the salt market itself. Because we're just a replacement for traditional salt. So the salt market itself, I don't have any hard numbers. But what I will tell you is that the big pharmaceutical companies uh, spend oh, $360 billion a year on heart-related medications. So that gives you an idea of how big uh, hypertension is and all the diseases related to excess sodium. So we're addressing it everywhere. You know, it's just, it's an exciting time for us to be able to help people's lives. It's an exciting time for us to help the food manufacturers get where they want to be because they do want to be there. It's not like the food people are evil. They just, before Microsoft, they didn't have a way to get there. Mm. But of course, food, food producers are looking for low cost opportunities as much as anything. How do you compete in a market where salt is relatively inexpensive as a as an additive? Um, yeah. I, I guess there are costs that you incur in producing this new salt, um, which you have to have covered. That's true. And, you know, salt is one of the, the most least expensive components across the world because it's available everywhere. Uh, and we simply state it like this. We are a value added product. We're helping you save people's lives. Yes, it is more expensive than salt. Let's just put it out there right now. It's more expensive than salt. But we can make it work so that it, on a per serving basis. Now, if you, you really drill it down and you really get to how much it costs per serving, the onboarding cost isn't significant. And when you think of it this way, uh, they're they're making a better product. They're potentially avoiding having special labeling uh, on their front of their package. They're potentially avoiding being put in special parts of the store. They're potentially avoiding being restricted when they can advertise. So it all works out in addition to the fact that the guy that's running the production plant, you know, where things really happen, he's in love with Microsoft because there isn't salt on the floor. He doesn't have to salt things twice. Uh, it's not uncommon in a nut factory to have to salt things twice. And so, I mean, they're like, the, that takes away from some of the um, the extra costs. Mm, yeah. Look, um, IPO, a market coming up soon. What's the date? Have you got a, a, a date in mind? Are you um, launch prepared? We think we're launch prepared. Uh, the, the current date that I know of is October 18th. So thereafter, hopefully we'll be able to, to trade. Look, I know we've not been able to talk about profit and loss and, and balance sheet and so forth, but I would love to have you back on um, when you produce some earnings that we can look at um, through the uh, ordinary stock market release cycle. And we can dig a little bit deeper into this fascinating subject, Rick. And I wish you well with the IPO. Thank you. I look forward to talking to you again. Good. OK, that's uh, Rick Guiney. He's the chief executive of Microsoft, which is due to come to the London market mid-month here in October. Thank <laughs> you.